Greetings, everyone. I hope you are well and having a great day. I'm Donovan, and welcome to Burnout and Break Stuff. Today, we're going to check out our 1973 Dodge Dart Sport 340, a project I call Hot Dog Flavored Water. Let's get into it. Let's go check it out. Man, this thing is legitimately cool. 1973 Dart 340 Sport. 727 automatic, 321, eight and a quarter, open. Uh, numbers matching on the door sticker, the upper dash frame, the vehicle identification code under the hood, fender tag if you will, whatever your nomenclature. So anyway, uh, putting this car back together to get it ready for street action again. I have the numbers matching 340 engine, you know, the core support, all those things go together. So there's investment potential in a car like this, a piece of automotive history and artwork. I would consider this to be a ratty muscle car. For 1973 standards, it's still legitimately a muscle car. Unfortunately, you know, people didn't take as good of care of the vehicle as they should have. Whatever life circumstances, I'm not uh, passing negative judgment on them. This is just what happens in life. We have our plans and our plans don't necessarily work out. And here we are. So I'm happy to pass this vehicle on to the next caretaker. I think it's a great piece of history for what happened to anybody's vehicle. This could have been a Studebaker from 1949 or whatever. Who knows, this could have been whatever it was. Anyway, something else that made somebody else happy. So I have, I have to put this thing back together and I'm having a good time doing so. So I hope you continue to follow along with Project uh, Hot Dog Flavored Water. I've referred to this vehicle. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day. I'm really enjoying the sunshine. The temperature is amazing. The humidity is just right. The, the sky, weather, all of it. This is just an amazing day. And I'm happy, glad to be out making a video of this car, just talking to myself, letting myself know that I'm having a good time. And if anybody else ever sees this and it puts a smile on their face for a second out of the day, my job here is done. You know. Patinaed muscle cars are the best. <laughs> someone held on to this and it's not in the crusher it was being sold on craigslist being parted out for 1800 bucks back in 2012 february december 2012 february 2012 i have the paperwork and we'll get into that later i don't know why i had to I guess I was rescuing another, can't save them all, critter from the crusher. Saving a critter from the crusher. Uh, being torn apart, somebody spent some time trying to put it back together. It's a 1973, this side of it is all 73. The passenger front fender is a 74, the interior is from a 74. I'll show you the differences between 73 and 74. But I'm having a great day, and I hope you're having a great day as well. Uh, I have replaced the upper and lower control arm bushings, the upper and lower ball joints, inner and outer tie rod ends, the tie rod sleeves, the pitman arm. It still has the original from data manufacturer, I think the four of 73 power steering sector. And 
I still have the correct steering column for it for a floor shift car. It does not have the uh, park select indicator up on the column like a column shifted car. You'll see a lot of these people try to change the options of the car originally came down the assembly line. They don't like them, so they try to change them to something else. Anyway, this is a fun car. I'm having, I'm having a good time with it. I hope that you're having a good time listening to me ramble on about my project vehicle madness. Thanks for listening to me Yammer. The uh, weather was really wonderful outside last week and uh, it was just nice to sit outside and take it all in, stare at the car projects and think about life. So now we're inside uh, Studio B and have our car and we'll start with uh, the paperwork that's sitting on the hood of our 68 Dart GT convertible. How I found the car back in 2012 and what led up to that purchase. Uh, we'll go over the car, the numbers in the door, like we did with the Roadrunner, if you watched that video. The numbers matching 340 is over here, we'll look at that. Uh, have a 727 from a 73 Plymouth Scamp uh, to go back with that 340. And I also have a 360 that's been remanufactured, uh, 727, you know, rebuilt. There's almost $5,000 sitting right there. I think the engine was $4,352 for a rebuild. Uh, transmission rebuild was 600 bucks, so just under five grand. That engine's been sitting on that stand since March of 1999, if you can believe that. I picked it up for a good deal. I couldn't pass it up. So let's uh, keep moving along. So here's the advertisement from Craigslist. Uh, the original one here came in October of 2012. Save this numbers matching basket case from being recycled. 1973 Dodge Dart 340 Sport. Console automatic, front disc, fold down rear seat, high back buckets. Uh, needs restoration, numbers matching block and body. I have the build sheet, which you can see right there. A clear, a clear title, this is a project car. I've been collecting parts for this car for many years. Lots of extra parts. Now, what's missing? Intake and carb, transmission, emblems. Again, this car needs restored. Uncut wiring harnesses, good glass, very little cancerous rot, and some surface. Taillight panel needs repaired or replaced. Needs a trunk pan. Floors are solid, but have surface rust. I will reply to serious inquiries I am considering parting this car out. Make me an offer. And then uh, by December, it was uh, being parted out. So that's basically how I came across it was I just bought it as a parts car. And I've toted the thing around for the last 10 plus years and have never really made any decision on what to do with it until last year. I had a bunch of leftover uh, front suspension components, you know, upper and lower ball joints, things like that from other projects, you know, bushings, and thought, what the hell, I'll I just put it back together as a ratty muscle car and, and maybe go have some fun with it and see what happens. So that's where I am with that part. Let's go take a look at the uh, body, the numbers, and uh, we'll look around on the floor pan, that type of thing, show you the good, the bad, and the ugly because there's plenty of ugly. Okay, now we're investigating our manufacturer sticker in the door, and we can see that there's a little bit of overspray where it's vehicles had some paint done on it before. Uh, we see L for uh, Dart, M, medium price uh, class, 29 for sports hardtop, H for 340, three for 1973 B is the Hamtramck assembly plant and then three nine four five oh eight and yeah, we'll take a quick look through the interior uh, what there is of it right now it's basically just in a mock-up stage like I say it came it came in a box of uh, it came in boxes and all kinds of loose 
parts here and there, and uh, the, there wasn't a dash pad on it, and the instrument cluster and the wood grain appliques were not in there, and so I was just digging all the parts out last year and, you know, test fitting, mocking things up. So the floor pan is, interior to the car is just a lot of surface rust. It's not, it's not all rotted out, which is good. So the floor pan in here does not need to be replaced. Now we'll check out the upper dash frame and move to the engine compartment. Okay, now we can see our upper dash frame vehicle identification number LM29H3B39458 matches our door sticker and we'll move around to the body coat tag or the fender tag. Take a quick peek at that, and then our upper core support. We'll take a look there, and uh, then we'll pull the fenders off and take a look at our front suspension upgrades. All right. Now we're at our fender tag, and we're not going to go over this entire thing, but we will look at the lower left corner being E55, significant as 340. Something I learned about this car because I thought all 340 cars had 727 transmissions. D34 indicates a standard duty 904 automatic transmission. Interesting. Always learning, I guess. LM29 H3B394508. And then back up one column or all the way over to the left, the next row, not column, FE5 for bright red. And we track across, there's the 315 for scheduled production date, March 15th. We move back to up a row, all the way over to the left, V4W, uh, indicative of the white uh, halo vinyl roof. A88 is a interior decor group. C16 is console. C56, bucket seats. And then we look just up above those two. We see N41 for dual exhaust. N42 for bright tips. And then above that is V9W, which indicates the vinyl uh, longitudinal body stripes in W, meaning white. Our core support again, and then we see that there's a stamping error there that says B3 instead of 3B, 3945088. So like the advertisement said, it's numbers matching body, you know, from the sticker in the door to the upper dash frame to the vehicle identification, uh, fender tag, and body codes tag, core support. Okay, here's our numbers matching 340. It came with the car, obviously. Uh, there was no oil pan with it, no water pump, no timing cover. The heads were off the block, no intake manifold and car like the advertisement stated. And so that has the 68 to 70 340 intake. And let's take a look down here at the, we can see there's our 3B394. 508, so that is, in, that is in fact uh, our numbers matching 340. I have not done anything to this engine other than add the parts that were missing and leave it sitting on that stand to roll around. A 727 that came from my 1973 Plymouth Scamp parts car, so I figured I could go through that engine and transmission and clean the, you know, inspect it, clean it up, fix whatever is wrong and get it back in the car. But I've been toting this, I think it's a 1976 360 
and I've been toting this around for probably the last 15 years. Like I said, it's been on that stand since March of 1999. And we can see it has some ARP studs, uh, the bolts for the windage tray, and some H-beam Eagle connecting rods. And move around to the deck surface. We can see our H116CP 30 over hyper eutectic pistons. And then we can look at our list. And there's $4,352.47 spent back starting late 98, moving into uh, March of 99 when Ralph picked it up from the machine shop. And then it looks like in June of 99, the 727 was overhauled with a stage three shift kit another six hundred dollars so six hundred we're looking at forty nine hundred and fifty two dollars and forty seven cents in parts there imagine how expensive it would be to uh build that engine today <laughs> all right let's get the fenders off and uh we'll take a look at the front suspension parts oh before i do that I mentioned something while I was outside in the sun yammering on about how this car is a a mix of 73 and 74 parts and if you've parted out enough 73 and 74 a bodies if you paid any attention the uh, you'll notice here on the driver fender on these bolts here and here in 73, they're spread farther apart. And here's a 74 fender on a 73 core support. There'd be the upper mounting hole there. There's the lower for the fender. And down here, you can see that's where the 73 fender would have attached, like this one here. So that's, that's different between 73 and 74. The interiors are different as well as far as the pattern on the seats. So like I said earlier, we'll go ahead and get the fenders off and we'll take a look at the suspension components that I've replaced. So you can see that. All right. Okay. Now with our fenders removed and the wheels turned to one side we can get a better view of our front suspension components and see what we've done in here so we have new upper and lower control arm bushings new upper and lower control arm bump stops uh, competition engineering three-way adjustable shocks Upper and lower ball joints have been replaced, uh, new brake hoses, and the rotors and calipers are from another duster project. And so they were in good working order at the time I removed them. So I decided I would put them on here. And that's all the farther I made it last year before winter set in and it had to go under a tarp where uh, the last video did the introduction on it. We'll go around to the see down there's the new lower control arm bushing there I chose to stick with a manual disc brake instead of the brake booster for power brakes not really a power brake kind of guy and so we can see the back side with our uh, upper and upper control arm bushings or new and the ball joints and our inner and outer tie rod ends along with the sleeves new pitman arm so there's plenty of new front suspension components 
so it'll take a front end alignment and uh, drive well track straight that type of thing new is better than old worn out a body suspension parts i've driven plenty of a bodies with roached front ends in my lifetime and how they track across the highway <laughs> little correction goes a long way when you least expect it so anyway that's where we are with this part and uh, hopefully i will be able to get on a creeper maybe underneath the car and take a look around uh, that may or may not happen i haven't got that far yet we'll see how that goes that could be another video as well uh, let's let's take a look at the uh, real ugly part which is the trunk floor and the taillight panel like i said we take a look at the ugly for sure and that's the uh, taillight panel it's pretty wasted uh, i don't know if amd makes a replacement taillight panel for a 73 through 76 dart sport at this point in time the last time i looked they did not so that would be a, a fix it issue and then and then there is the trunk floor if one could consider that still a floor it's just really bad in the spare tire well which is common for them to collect water and rot like this one did i'm thinking what i'll do is probably just make a bracket to remove the center support there for the fuel tank and that way i can just weld a bracket down inside the verticals of the uh, spare tire tub that way i can support the fuel tank and it won't fall on the ground and then i'll just cover up the uh, spare tire well for now i mean a body spare tire wells are useless for anything other than the factory size tire at least that's been my experience with them so you're definitely not going to fit a 235 6015 or a 275 6015 in that so that's kind of the plan for right now so. well thanks for following along with uh project hot dog flavored water i greatly appreciate everyone who views i especially like the likes and subscribes uh, much appreciated I really hope that everyone has a wonderful day because that's really what's most important out of any of this is that uh, we're finding happiness. Life is treating us well. And uh, at the end of this video is a slideshow with some short clips of videos interspersed with putting the, uh, putting the front suspension, you know, basically from where the car started out of the backyard um, and being pushed around, pressure washed, that type of thing. So feel free to watch a silent slideshow if uh, I, I kind of like silence myself. So uh, that's to me is a nice thing. But, uh, you know, if you don't like that, put on your own music and just follow along. I greatly appreciate everybody for viewing. Thanks a lot. I hope you have a great day.
Wait for it. Eh, not so bad. Ouch.
how many 1963 to 73 Chrysler products does one guy need to own? And they're just, they're everywhere. So I, I guess you need them all, all of them. That's the appropriate answer. So along with engine fishing, I'm car shuffling today. Cars are gonna find themselves in new locations. So I can do the appropriate work on them. My huh, moon tank there, <laughs> if you will. So yeah, it's on the property as far as the eye can see. Chrysler products. In various states of disrepair that need to find new homes so yeah good times good times bye bye